Are you wondering what drives successful leaders to excel and maintain their competitive edge? Today we'll get to these big questions. Hi, I'm Kiran Maestri. Welcome to Future of Our People. It's a series dedicated to leaders who are shaping the future of world. Today, I'm thrilled to welcome Niranjini, the CFO for India, Europe and World Travel Retail at the Hershey Company. With over two decades of extensive experience in finance, Niranjini has shaped business strategies and led several business units for global firms like Hershey, Procter & Gamble, Nokia and Unilever. Known for her exceptional leadership skill, she is very passionate about developing people and systems and excels in negotiation and crisis management. She also serves as a director on the board of several companies. So join us as we uncover the insights and experience of a leader who is shaping the future of corporate efficiency and the workplace culture. Niranjini, it's a great to have you with us. Thanks so much, Raghu, for having me. It's a pleasure to join this podcast today. The pleasure is all ours, Niranjini. I know our listeners are eager to hear from you. Let's uh, dive right in. So Simon Sinek once famously said, Niranjini, people don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. On that note, what's your why behind what you do? And could you share with us your core purpose that ha- that drives you and how this has shaped your journey? Sure, I think it's a fantastic question. So thanks for that. Um, let me start a little bit about telling you about myself. As a, as a young girl, um, I always wanted to be a career woman. Okay? And I was deeply, deeply inspired by my mom. Um, she always taught me to leave a mark in whatever I take up and, and not do anything half-heartedly. So that stayed really with me uh, all, all through. Cut to today, I think there are two things um, that clearly drive me. One is the opportunity to make a difference and create impact through the work that I do. The second one is to purely create a meaningful people culture for my teams where people can come in, grow and thrive. So these are two things that really drive me. And what is very interesting is this, is that this completely resonates with uh, the Hershey core purpose of creating more moments of goodness in people's life. I guess that's why I'm here today. That's fantastic. And thank you for sharing your uh, organization purpose as well, making more moments of goodness. And I really loved about uh, uh, making the difference uh, as well. And and we you, you touched upon the culture as well, which I would be love to hear more about that. It's very clear your core purpose is central to your mission in terms of what you do, right? And given its importance, and I'm curious in terms of how your core purpose is interwoven into your daily operations and decision making within your organization. And in fact, I'll, um, there is a very good stat from Harvard Business Review, uh, Engineering, where they pointed out companies that activate their core purpose into their business operations can see a significant impact in their profitability up by 17%. On that note, I'm very curious how you ensure that your purpose is more than a statement. It's really reflected in your daily operations and as decision making. Absolutely. And I think you, you called it out really well that um, You know, the purpose needs to be practiced every day in one's life for it to be truly meaningful. Uh, So from Hershey's standpoint, whenever we talk about creating moments of goodness, that's something that we practice on a day-to-day basis and that's at the crux of everything we do. Uh, Talking about how does this come into business decision making, uh, for me, it's it's about doing what's right for the business and the organization and having the long-term view for every single decision that I make is is extremely critical. And the other part is we are first business leaders and functional leaders later on. Sometimes we kind of mix up the two, but I think it's important to keep business first. And uh, that drives drives all the different uh, decisions across all touch points for me. Uh, Very impressive, Neil. And I I really love the fact in terms of how you said business wisdom comes first, no matter whatever functional units you're representing is you all are working towards one common goal that is achieving key results as well are there any examples that you can share with us or any recent examples how you activated uh, in the most recent it doesn't have to be your organization it's just in 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 very general in terms of how you translate that purpose into your into your decision making style is there any example that you could uh, give us yeah sure um so I, I think um, for me, a defining moment on, on my leadership journey has been where initially I used to think, you know, if you do a good job, you're kind of home, right? But later on, I realized as I kind of started growing up uh, in my career that you're only as good as your team. 
and therefore thereby building a very strong uh, team is something that every leader should invest time and effort yeah and and if your team is strong 80% of the battle is won right it it's initially a little tough uh, to build and sometimes we in fact feel a little lazy to even invest the time and effort but i think that's where one needs to really push and push the envelope and say this is how i can make this work and once that effort is put and then you kind of start building on it on a day to day basis i think it truly unlocks magic so is it fair to say that you don't build the business you build the people and let people build the business yes that's a smart way to build the business that you have such an extensive experience in in your leadership as well is there any defining moment where you felt like okay uh, where you felt like this is because you as a leader you always tend to learn right because our experiences teach us to become a better person so was there any moment where you can think of uh, Uh, that really shaped your journey in terms of leadership role in terms of how you lead others yeah i'll go to go back to my first role in unilever i think um, when i started as a fresh trainee in my first role in in unilever which was back then we were called as bombay branch uh, responsible for the western region i think i was entrusted with a team of almost 20 to 25 people as a fresh eyed you know wide eyed 22 year old uh, handling a team of that size and uh, a very diverse team you had people who were freshers you had people who were close to retirement you had a great blend of professionals um you know young people just out of college so for me it was a very very defining moment and i think it gave me a lot of learning opportunities to really adapt my style and and ways of addressing different needs of different people in the group i think i learned a lot and and had the organization not entrusted with me uh, interested me with such great opportunities right at the start of my career um things could have been very different so i am really grateful that you know i got these meaningful experiences very early on my career that i could um, bend on so is it uh, it's, it's a great very a long a very early in your career you understood what good looks like right and that's the practice you followed on your journey as well so touching to that point as well now if you had to give an advice to younger version of yourself now you have reached a point where you are bringing up more leaders uh, i wanted to understand a bit more about what makes a good leader versus the especially in this current era of generative ai era right where where the leadership styles are getting evolved so what do you think are the skills that one should carry in true management style i'll kind of put a 5a approach to it okay i think for me first thing starts with um, the aspiration I think as a leader you need to aspire to win you need to aspire for a newer tomorrow you need to aspire to renew the current to a, you know a better tomorrow right i think it starts with aspiration the second one as a leader is is what is important is to be aware you need to be self aware you need to be aware of your team of your surroundings where you're playing today i think the awareness is extremely critical for for anyone especially someone who's young the third one is gets more critical as you go grow in in your career which is being accountable so as a leader the buck stops with you so you need to have the owner mindset to say i will own it and i will drive it so the accountability becomes critical and even more impactful as you grow in your career the last two that i would talk about is more for the today which is being agile you got to think on your feet right you got to anticipate what can go wrong you got to you know stay agile and keep yourself abreast of what's happening around and lastly but not the least is being adaptable and i think that because we all are you know change is constant we all keep grappling with different environments different ecosystems that we are thrown in so being adaptable is super critical so for me the five a's are you know aspiration being aware accountable being agile and adaptable very impressive All the five A's. Trust me, I haven't heard. Uh, One more. I, I really love it, and in a way, um, you touched upon the point of accountability, which is one of my favorite topic as well. In terms of, as you rightly pointed, accountability starts from the leader itself, right? By clearly defining the results, and and awareness is pretty much uh, very important in this current business environment as well, right? not only in just aware of your own internal but aware of what is a driving the forces external forces as well uh, being aware of that so is there um, going back to accountability you said 
because accountability is great because that ties up with employee experience as well right because how do you ensure that you you create a culture of accountability where your employees are thriving at work i think it's a very relevant question uh, i think um, accountability is one thing that uh, the more you do there's more to do right so for me um, i think it's it's it starts with building the trust people need to feel comfortable and have the trust with each other to first feel accountable they need the base this trust then one needs to raise the bar but you got to be there when you know they fail as a leader secondly understand what people's motivations are show them empathy right they'll get more accountable and give them stories that that you know you can help them to elevate their game so when you do this a positive spiral starts uh, people start getting more accountable and lastly i would think you know rely on your intuition because sometimes different approaches for different individuals not you know one size does not fit fit all and thereby to have accountability you also need to motivate people differently for you know across different individuals and lastly to have true accountability one needs to you know cut the fear of failure with your teams you got to give them a playing field and and trust them empower them and then cut the fear of fail failure and i think once these things come together people do get accountable they start putting their best foot forward and uh, that kind of creates that positive spiral like it's uh, i really love the point of fear of failure as well i mean you create a culture of accountability where you provide a psychological safety for your employees right, right. people only take ownership when they know that even if we got it wrong our leaders are going to support because that's the way you thrive the innovation at your workplace as well so dear anjani for sharing those tips in terms of what's your biggest priority when it comes to future of for your people yeah so uh, so consciously one needs to so basically couple of them right i'll talk about two big priorities first one is to consciously look for avenues to grow them meaningfully and when i say consciously i really mean the word conscious because it's one might think you're looking out, out for revenues for growth but it may not be that something that's relevant for them i think the the word is to consciously keep looking for opportunities to grow your people meaningfully totally totally invest in them yeah mm. and raise the bar and and link their objectives to the larger end result because when you do that they automatically start feeling that uh, drive to go ahead and make it happen right so for me the priority is one is consciously look for avenues to grow people and uh, raise the bar and and link their day to days with the end objectives so that we know they know how they contribute to the larger picture so you mean to say in a way connect one's job to the bigger uh, purpose in terms of the key results what organizations and and that's the way you create a sense of responsibility as well right because yep. no longer they're just distinct to their own job but they are looking a bigger purpose because the job contributes to the bigger reason so you talked about a great when we started right in terms of culture by like going back how important it is for your uh, for your own success and for your team success culture is is really the backbone uh, for every organization that's right toxic cultures or you know myopic people processes can really pull down a company irrespective of what size and you know state they are in so a culture where people are truly energized and encouraged to share their ideas or a culture where people participate in decision making people can be themselves where you know a culture where this diverse thinking and inclusive uh, attitude will be a huge enabler and a game changer for any organization okay so it's basically culture is all about creating those experiences for your employees so they they are thriving at work as well and uh, have you and you mentioned about toxic culture have you been part of any of those toxic cultures before in the past i wouldn't say toxic but definitely experiences where uh, one gets to learn what not to do you know so you kind of put yourself in similar situations when you when you have you know other instances these things can happen and say you know look this is what i learned or i struggled with so i need to make sure that that doesn't happen with my team or my team. Uh, so i think that's also a learning of sorts you know you need not always only look at good things to learn you can even learn what not to do 
So the advice you would give to employees who feel they are not where the environment is currently not supporting is take that as a learning opportunity. Yes. Right, and because we have to, we have, yeah, at some point in life you have to see all kind of environments. That's where you become better version. Of <laughs> let's let's get to know a bit more about you, um, uh, Niranjani. In terms of, is there any one personal practice that you follow diligently to be uh, where that has shaped you to become who you are now? Okay, very interesting question. <laughs> so I'll, I'll talk about a little bit of uh, a practice, and then I'll talk about uh, a habit or something that stayed with me. Okay, so. I think from a habit, uh, I'm an eternal optimist. So, I mean, irrespective of how things go and how bad things can get, I always look for venues and ways to bounce back. Um, and that's, I think, has helped me personally, has helped me professionally. Uh, so that's one habit. And uh, I think a personal practice that I will talk about is a little old school, but that stayed with me, is to put pen to paper. Okay. So I love putting down my notes. Um, and, and that's always helped me stay on top of things, organize my thought process and, and also getting them done. So I still carry my notebook or my diary around and I keep scribbling notes during meetings. I kind of go back and look at it. Uh, and I think that's um, been through, through these many years. It's old school. The, the current generation will say, oh, you should use a iPad or you know something. But um, I love the writing and the pen to paper. And in fact, uh, 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 to be honest, I was speaking to one of the CEO in my podcast. I had an opportunity, and in fact, I've learned from uh, his name is Mr. Amit uh, from Ipsos, who does journaling, right? And yeah. I use that as a practice. Of course, I don't put pen to paper, but I do that in the um, in in my morning before I start something, right? What are my success criteria is going to look like? But that daily journaling really brings back out your memories, even at the end of the day or even one month, if you reflect back, it yeah. just brings back in terms of what you did and what needs to be done as well. I really like the example about that eternal optimist as well. So um, is there any uh, time where you felt like we all are going through a difficult time, like one has to go through the challenging times? How? that eternal optimism has helped you to overcome a challenge is there any situation or a challenge that you can think of you could share with us okay good question i must think of okay i'll talk about my experience in when i moved into doing a corporate finance role in uh, during my png days um it was a role that i asked for because i'd always stayed in business and i felt i need to uh, learn this side of of uh, you know the finance uh, map it was very difficult for me to get into that role after spending so many, many years in finance. It was not my comfort zone at all. Uh, but I think um, initially there were like questions in my thought, in my head saying, did I do the right thing? There was fear of failure. There were, you know, this typical initially uh, butterflies in my stomach. And that was also a time when uh, there were a lot of changes that happened in, in the external world with respect to corporate finance, be it the new st- accounting standards, you know, change of auditors and, and a bunch of things. So I think I had to like really sit me sit myself down and and uh, again put pen to paper and say what are the things I can really drive and I'm I can uh, make a meaningful impact. Uh, how is it that I can do it in my style and not necessarily how the previous person did that job, right? And, and I kind of kind of started putting these questions that were running in my head into uh, into paper. And once I started addressing it uh, very surgically, you know, step by step, point by point, I think. The, the fear started going down uh, and the optimism started coming up um, and I just realized that a lot of time people expect you to do, run a role a certain way because that's how they've seen the role ra- being run but I think what's uh, what you can uh, genuinely be- bring is how you want to run the role and right? you can craft your own uh, uh, definition of that role and uh, I, I learned so much out of that role and I think I did a very good job of that role so uh, it's all about overcoming your internal monsters so that's the thank you by the way uh, we often talk about uh, leaders being vulnerable thank you for sharing those uh, experiences especially how everyone has got their uh, uh, their winning formula right how do they overcome a certain obstacle or how do they overcome a certain situation and thanks for sharing your winning formula in terms of being an eternal optimist, how do you overcome certain barriers or certain challenges coming your way as well? So, so finally, in terms of uh, 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 in terms of uh, 
who has been your biggest inspiration when it comes to leadership is there anyone who you're inspired by or shaped by in terms of who you are and what you are and how you operate yeah sure i think um i'll name two so one is from my personal life which is my mom as i as i indicated in the start i think she's been a pillar of strength for me and and even today i kind of get hugely inspired by everything that she does uh, so it's my mom from my personal side and from our external corporate side i think i really admire uh, and nirmala sitaraman i think these are two very powerful women who uh, come from very middle class backgrounds um, and humble backgrounds to rise to the top uh, defying all pretty much all odds so i think uh, these two people um, have hugely, hugely inspired uh, my leadership style and i really look up to them this is very impressive thanks you great to get your insights in terms of your what drives you as a person right in terms of your purpose how you bring that purpose into your daily business operations and uh, and also how you activate the work cultures so that your employee experience your team is are thriving at work as well and thank you for sharing your best practice in terms uh, in terms of who are your biggest inspiration as a leader where you look up to especially during challenging situations and also personal practice that you put into practice like being an eternal optimist or putting a uh, pen on a paper and journaling that finally do you have any wisdom or um, that you would like to share to our viewers uh, especially youngsters who are looking to who are aspiring to be a leadership role is there any advice that you would like to give i think um, be a learner throughout your life i think it starts from there because uh, there's there's nothing like you know at all um, and uh, for me that's it's a, it's a, that is at the fulcrum of this whole piece because today i do see a lot of people saying oh i know at all because you know then the moment you do that you're shutting yourself to a lot of uh, new uh, opportunities and new thinking right so i think that's one um two is uh, i would like to tell my younger self perhaps not to take some things too seriously like right? you do your best you do everything that you can possibly impact and in your in your sphere of influence and leave the rest i think that's all that you can do sometimes you can get over overwhelmed and overworked uh, because you try to control all of it never happens right so you got to trust the universe and um, lastly have fun and enjoy ultimately life is uh, is for you know having those uh, meaningful relationships and bonding with um, the with peers with friends and family right so so take the time out to do something that's uh, meaningful to you as an individual no absolutely and uh, you've touched a great point of continuous learning right and if you had to cultivate a broad business acumen one of the ways you could do is continuous learning it's clear an example is you because you've led many functional business units even though you have come from a finance background but you've led many other functional units either it could be supply chain or procurement or it could be it if i'm right right and that continuous learning helps you to have that broad business acumen especially uh, in this current environment it it helps to enhance your collaboration skills as well it helps in terms of helping you to achieve those results and you also talked about fun and enjoy and doing the job is is just not doing the job it's basically achieving the results in this whole process have fun and enjoyment as well and uh, do your best thank you finally it goes back down to uh, your organization core purpose right it, it's all about making more moments of goodness uh, and have fun and uh, and enjoy uh, the enjoyment in that whole process brilliant insights thanks for sharing your insights and i'll make a point and i'll buy more uh, I'll, i'll create those more moments of goodness by buying hershey's chocolates as well thank you please do <laughs> thank you so much for having me raghu uh, i think it's been a complete pleasure enjoyed chatting and uh, you've always been a friend so i think it's it's great to have it kind of connect back and have these uh, nice conversations thanks again for having me